Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RecEd with a digital rebar uh, install video. Uh, this is the place to start if you are interested in digital rebar because we are going to install it. So we're going to walk through the process of literally installing it on a Linux system. In this case, I'm going to be using a server in the cloud in Linode, uh, but you could do this on a VM and a desktop and your desktop in a Raspberry Pi and a VM and a data center on the data center infrastructure. Anything that can run Linux can run digital rebar. So all you need to do is get a machine ready for the start. And then once you're there, you can start provisioning machines to your heart's content. So let's get rolling on this process. The place to start is from the RackN UX, which is at portal.rackn.io. And in that, when you bring it up, it'll literally start with the bootstrapping instructions uh, right here. And we're gonna go ahead and, and get those running. Um, I have a machine queued up and I'm gonna go ahead and run it. So here's my SSH in, looks great. It's just a blank machine. So I'm gonna make a directory for DRP and change to it. And then if I jump over here, my install instructions right here to download DRP. So in this case, um, this would bring in the stable install. I'm gonna use my latest install. There are no other real changes. You could use either. Our install has gotten uh, incredibly stable over time. And then I have to make it ex executable. So we'll do that. Um, install the SH and that looks great. And if I look at the options for install.sh, install help, help, what you'll see is that we have uh, added a lot of different configuration options. We're gonna take you through some of the more interesting ones um, over here, um, including system D, which lets you run this as a service instead of um, in, a pro in the local process thread. You can change the username and password. You can run in a container. This video is gonna work specifically on the bootstrapping, self-bootstrapping, which is a new feature that came in in our last release to support Edge Lab, but allows you to completely run the system from a single line command and will use our infrastructure as code patterns to completely bring up the system. So we're gonna start that. But before I do, I wanna explain something very important. With Digital Rebar, while the UX um, is downloaded from the internet, everything is actually running behind your firewall. And I have a graphic that helps lay this out. So uh, when you actually go to uh, portal.rackend.io, it downloads a single page app in React, and that is the UX. We're gonna install Digital Rebar on our infrastructure. And when we do that, the communication between the UX and the endpoint is actually completely uh, behind your firewall. We don't uh, connect to your system, poke holes in your firewall. You don't have to connect uh, digital rebar back to the internet at all. As a matter of fact, it's completely self-contained. And the browser acts as a bridge to download content from the Rackend library or the UX from the Rackend library. Um, and the endpoint itself doesn't have to connect back into the internet. Um, to be controlled or managed, you get to do that completely by yourself because Rackin is really about self-management and helping customers be autonomous. So we're not in the loop from that perspective. Uh, and this isn't actually air-gapped. air, -gapped. air -gapped is a level beyond that where the systems themselves cannot pull things down from the internet. Um, but the basic layout has as much of the control plane, um, actually all of the control plane, are completely behind your firewall. And uh, we don't manage it and touch it in any way. So if I get back to uh, this process, this is the uh, download, and then there's a, a sequence of operations that you can read in um, the, the digital rebar install steps. I'm gonna walk you through them here. So what I really wanna do is I'm gonna do install, and I'm gonna tell it I wanna install. There is upgrade and remove, there are also options. And I'm gonna start providing some important distinctions here. So I'm gonna tell it I wanna use version tip, uh, tip is our current, stable is the last release. And if you want, you can specify a very specific version that is that is up to you in this flag. And I also wanna run uh, it as an agent. So I'm telling it to install Digital Rebar as a system D daemon uh, so I can keep things going. And then I'm gonna tell it, this is the bootstrapping part, to start the runner and also do a self-create, or sorry, create self. And these are actually things that you could read about in these in our in our help. So those two things together will 
create a digital rebar runner in the digital rebar server. That is essential for bootstrapping because it allows the server to then run a workflow. Digital rebar's core operational automation is workflows. It's, it's sequences of tasks that um, digital rebar pulls together and runs. Uh, in this case, by making a runner on digital rebar itself, we're able to use our workflows to bootstrap the system. So that allows you to bring in whatever automation you've designed and actually preface it, prep, download things. Um, we'll, show, we'll walk into how these things go. We just want to do a very basic one in this, in this case. So what I want to do is I want to tell it to install uh, content. And so that contents we're going to get to pick out of our library. You could actually have your own content which is pretty common. Um, so we want community content. Um, you could provide a URL and download your own. So I want these two core items, the task library and DRP community content. Those are pretty common library components. And then I want to tell it that the initial workflow that I need to run over here is bootstrap base. Uh, which literally is going to complete our install steps for us. So it'll download our discovery image, it'll set the prefs, I'll uh, create an SSH key on the server, some sort of handy things to get running and in a base. And that's pretty much all I need to get these things running. I hit enter now and it's downloading the zip file that contains all the digital rebar components uh, and it's going to go through and basically work those pieces. Uh, and that's a about it. We're just about at a point where digital rebar is going to be installed and ready to go. Um, and so, uh, and I don't need to follow these instructions. This is done for me automatically in Bootstrap. If I pull this out of the way, I do need the machine's IP address. Like I said, this is a server running in Linode. Excellent. Grab that one over here. Come back to my UX. I just supply the IP address and go. Uh, and the first time you come in, it's going to uh, give you a TLS error. In this case, I have a firewall problem that I need to fix before I can attach to the server. And I left it like this because I wanted to show you what that would look like. So normally I'd get a TLS exception, um, a certificate exception saying I had to accept a self-signed certificate. But here, uh, since the Linode server has no firewall ports open by default, I need to fix that. So let me jump in and fix that. So if I come in and uh, do a firewall command, add these ports and reload, now I've opened the firewall. 8092 and 8091 are the core ports that uh, Digital Rebar needs to operate. And if I refresh this page, now I will get my certificate uh, correction. Let me refresh over here so you can see how that looks slightly different. So we're still getting the same connection. I have to accept the certificate. Let me get that going. There you go. All right. So I'm going to log in on uh, my first portal. I could have logged in on either. Uh, you have to accept our uh, limited use license. Excellent. And at this point, I now have uh, a basic digital rebar system running. And you can see it created a machine. I didn't have to do any work. This is the um, machine itself. It's run through the bootstrap basic steps. And if I want, I can come into the jobs log and see the things that were done uh, as part of that bootstrapping workflow on my behalf, setting the prefs, generating an SSH key, downloading my discovery ISO. So a lot of the tasks that um, would be normally have to be done uh, are automated as part of the bootstrapping, which is super handy. Uh, in this case, what I also want to do uh, is, and you don't have to do this, uh, there is enough basic rights to do some, some simple demos, but to really unlock some of the features that we're going to want to demo, uh, you just need to create a simple license. So in that case, um, you can create yourself a login ID and account. I've already got myself logged in here. Uh, walk through the process and just verify your email address. And then I can pick a uh, organization, authorize my uh, license in this case. If you're just doing it for yourself, you won't have the choice of other organizations. 
Um, that is uh, something specific to RecN as an administrative account. But now I've I've installed my license um, and I'll have a basic um, ability to do um, uh, contacts, cloud management, pooling, uh, some of the more advanced features by downloading this uh, free trial license. And it's entirely self-service, so you don't have to contact us. Just go in. We will not be reaching out and contacting you and bugging you about that email address uh, unless you want us to. So now that I've gotten the machine going, um, I'm, in a, I'm in a really good place uh, to then do some more um, interesting type of provisioning. So what I want to do here is I want to come back. I need to unlock the machine which is great. I can't make changes to it when it's locked and the bootstrapping is going to automatically lock. But instead of using bootstrap base, I'm going to use bootstrap advance. And when I do that process, it's going to actually go through and do some important additional steps on the system. So in this case, what it's doing is it's setting up our contexts uh, operations. Uh, and that predominantly means that we're installing Docker on the server. So we're going through an automated Docker install process, and then we will create our basic runner context. That runner context will allow me to that basic runner context will allow me to um, use it use the system even if I don't have physical machines attached because I can just use a runner. Uh, create a Docker, uh, an agent running in Docker, uh, and that would then let me bootstrap into clouds. And we have a demo that shows actually using this system to um, bootstrap machines into Linode, uh, Google, Amazon, um, really anywhere you want. It's using, it's just driving Terraform for you uh, to implement that and then running, avoiding cloud init or stack scripts or whatever you have to do to then post provision and complete the process as a digital rebar server. Um, of course, the same thing would be helpful if you're doing um, local on-premises boot. This is the best way to get started and running. Uh, but if you're booting physical machines, you don't need the contexts um, for that process. You can come in, declare a subnet, pick the items that you need to get running. Um, so in this case, if I'm running VMs, I'd be a VM. This is actually the Ethernet port. And then I can use that interface. Uh, generally, we make pretty good suggestions for defaults. Um, I'm certain the cloud provider does not want me to actually enable a DHCP server, so I'm disabling it here. And now I've got uh, DHCP set up and ready to go in the system. And our DHCP uh, mechanisms are very powerful. So we do uh, some a lot of um, ways that we can make DHCP work in pretty much any environment. And we don't require DHCP. So if you need to forward to us or you have another DHCP infrastructure managed by another team and they won't let you manage touch that, um, that is perfectly fine. We have ways to do all the great boot provisioning pieces we do without having to own uh, DHCP. So at this point, we have uh, again completed our, works, our bootstrapping and advanced pieces. And now I could uh, come in and literally build a machine. I can just create uh, demo one, come in here, pick runner, start with a just a discover base workflow and go. And when I do that, I literally have now put a machine in and is now under management control for digital rebar. If I want to play a little bit more, um, which is sort of fun, I could go in and we have a uh, huge catalog of different capabilities that you can pick and choose. In this case, uh, it's not destructive. I'm just going to add the development library here. If I wanted, I could pick the one that is in tip instead of the stable one. Uh, and that's really all it takes. So remember from this drawing, I'm going to the catalog, I'm downloading something here. It's being passed through into digital rebar. Digital rebar never calls out. And so once I've done that, I've, I've literally expanded the number of workflows and options that I have available. Um, in this case, I have a simple uh, load generator workflow, and I can turn that one on and just create some activity in the system for me to play with. Um, this is the fastest and simplest way to just build a basic digital rebar uh, implementation um, and start just playing with it. It's even easier than if I was to take a VM and run a VM and get that running. Um, I will do another video for what it looks like to run uh, Digital Rebar on your desktop and boot VMs. 
Um, that is another great demo, uh, also very simple to do. In this case, you can run this on your desktop, uh, especially if you have Docker installed. It will then just work to uh, do the same demo without having to pixie boot anything at all. And you can play with um, the remarkable infrastructures, code patterns, and pieces that we have, have running. So once again, this is machines and, and the basic pieces for where machines are. Info and preferences will show you all of the components and pieces that I have, I have running, uh, allow you to set, set things. License manager is where you want to install licenses. If you want to send us email or have questions, once you register a license, uh, you can use the inbox and communicate with us. Uh, and then workflows is really the control hub for all things digital rebar. And you can go in and look at the um, remarkable amount of content that we already have and then play with things you're on. The next step after this, we really, a color demo actually trains you in how to build your own content packs. So it describes how to build workflows, how to build stages and tasks and automation in digital rebar. Um, very, very straightforward way to do it. And everything I showed you really translates directly into being able to learn our infrastructure's code pattern using Color Demo. It's a very great next step for you. Or, you know, play around a little bit and see if you can, um, and see if you can actually go through. This is, uh, I'm failing the CAPTCHA system, so it's saying you don't look like a person for some reason. Um, maybe it knows me too well. If you have further questions, uh, once again, come to our website, join our Slack, um, and you know, be part of our community. We have a lot of operators doing really exciting things with infrastructure, and we would love for you to be a part of it. Thank you.